I don't know how to start this podcast. Like, RIP Kobe and, and his daughter. Like, what's going on? Like, what, if there is a God, what is he doing? Like, yeah, Juice World was bad and, and whatever other singer was bad, but Kobe, inspiration to like the world, not just basketball fans, like sports fans, anyone, poetry fans, because he read poetry. Um, and I didn't know this, but he was fluent in Italian. He was, he lived in Italy as well. I can't believe we're saying was though. Like, too young. Like he would have done so much more. Yeah, he retired from basketball, but he was an inspiration still in everything he did, you know. And obviously a family man, four daughters, and just this horrific accident that nobody would, you know. He, can believe, like, the most shocking you, like, I was like, what? This has got to be fake, like, is this real? Like, I couldn't believe it when I heard it. I'm sure a lot of you are the same. Kobe Bryant, like, basketball legend, it's like, in football, if like, I don't know, Messi or Ronaldo, like, say they retire 10 years time from now, they've got family and all, and everything, and this happens, you know, you can't imagine it's impossible to imagine, but we're living in that reality now. And, you know, 2020, yeah, Happy New Year. I mean, I, I've given the positives, but, like, still can't believe it. Like, what an inspiration he was to millions, to every, to the world, um, what he did for the sport, um, LA Lakers, you know, what, what he won as an individual in the Olympics for USA as well so it's just like how can I put this in the video I mean this is a podcast by the way and it's podcast 28 or 29 I think it's podcast 29 but yeah didn't really want to start it that way but I had to pay tribute and there's people playing tribute in it from every sport from every walk of life um, presenters breaking down, trying to explain or remember a memory of him, like Jimmy Fallon I saw recently saying that he knew him from when he was 17, before he was successful in basketball, when he was just a kid, and yeah, so it was emotional for him obviously, and only knew him in that way, and only met him maybe even once, think of LeBron James, another basketball top player, you know, if it weren't for Kobe, he wouldn't have become a basketball player or be as good as he is. And it's just not good. It's not a good time. The world is grieving, let's just say that. Uh, I've got other stuff to talk about, not all so sombre, but I had to address that. I mean, how can you not? I was going to make a light little video about it, but I don't want to get too down over it. But how can I not, you know? So just for put it in the podcast. Just talk about it normally, you know. Um, yeah, I've made videos about like people that like famous people that died, but just sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sadly, I've had to make it about people I know too. Twice. Yeah, I mean, even if you don't know Kobe personally, like you know his impact on the world, so it would affect you just as much as people close to him. And the Grammys still went ahead. Which I'm going to talk about actually in a bit, you know, but the world did stop. And I think, the other, was it Neymar? Yeah, the other day for PSG, he'd found out at half time that uh, what happened. And he did like a little tribute, a little 24 symbol after he scored. Billy Ray Cyrus at the Grammys had number 24 on his guitar. Um, you know, RIP Black Mamba. And of course I knew of him already, you know, long before this. But I didn't watch, I don't watch basketball. But I know the impact he had and how good he was. Just from the way people talk about him. 
and you know, it affects me when these singers are taken too young, but this is just another, you know, they were people before they reached the top, before they reached greatness. This guy that reached greatness and was great, but had humility as well, and was down to earth. You know, he went straight into basketball, didn't go to college, so respect for that. And he loved his poetry, loved Italy. He was an AC Milan fan. So, you know, across every sport, he will be missed. And across the world, regardless, whether you like sport or not, you know who he is. Um, it's just, I can't get my head around it. And of course, I was having a great weekend because it was my brother's birthday. Saturday, went out to eat. I'll explain that as well. Or I'll probably forget and then, yeah. Like last time there was something like, on the last podcast, something I said I was going to talk about but I didn't. Well, mind you, the last podcast was all about Prince Harry and the royal bullshit. It's all bullshit. Um, but yeah, podcast 29. I, I don't know if I'm going to do this every week or every other week. Um, we'll see when this comes out. Depends what happens. If something big happens, I'll talk about it. But yeah, so Friday my brother went out and got lashed. I wasn't invited to that. Or, well, I don't know. When I get drunk, I'm dangerous. That might have been why, but... Because I went to numerous places where I probably couldn't get in. Don't go all ableism on me, yeah. Let him have his free time. Little bro's got to have some free time. It's fed, you know. How can he not? He gets fed up with me, I'm sure. I get fed up with him too. His brother's in it, but yeah. Um, that was Friday. Got on the lash, then Saturday evening and like family get together. Which you'll see, or you would have seen on the vlog, depending when I upload it. Warning, this vlog is slightly shorter than the average, but it's good, it's good. Uh, it's more of a David Dobrik style. So like quick, snappy. Nowhere near as funny, but like, my attempt at being funny. I don't know, am I funny? I don't know. It, it depends on your uh, your opinion of funny. It's subjective, isn't it, really? But so, Saturday went out, got, got a lot of food, drank a bit, you know. We like to eat, it, being Italian. Italian restaurant and food. That was it, basically. Um, so that was nice. Little get-together, birthday cake, all the usual. Um, and there was a guy in there, in the restaurant, that, um, or one of the waiters. He had this really bad, like, mushroom haircut. Like, Austin Kutcher, dude, where's my car? Kind of haircut. And my cousin goes to him, so do you cut your own hair then? Who does your hair? He's like, no, I don't trust barbers. And my dad was like, hold on. If you walk down, if you go down the road this way, you'll find my shop and I'll give you a nice haircut. He's like, no, I don't trust barbers. I cut my own hair. And literally, I don't understand why this guy had this haircut. Like, no wonder, like, like, poor you in your own life. Like, we're all just laughing at the geezer. Well, not in a, na well, yeah, in a nasty way, probably. I felt sorry for the guy. We were all just cracking up. Because my cousin asked him, like, where'd you get your hair done? So, it's like, poor guy getting laughed at. He's at work. Well, change your haircut and avoid the ridicule, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's making you suffer, then, you know, it's like a kid at school getting bullied because he's slightly overweight. He grows up and then he gets really buff in the gym. And he goes and beats up all those guys that called him fat when he was a kid. It's that kind of thing, like, why are you going to cause yourself trauma? Such a bad haircut, though. It might be in the video. I think it is in the video. Because he was taking our orders, obviously. But yeah, that was nice. A lot of food. I love food, so. Who doesn't mean Ita Italian? It's like ingrained in your DNA. It's like part of your DNA. Food, pasta, or the usual. Pizza. Ah. Oh. But yeah, I hope you guys had a good weekend. I know I did, obviously, until the, the Kobe news. But yeah, the Grammys was on. I, did, I didn't really. I haven't really done any research into this. 
I know Billie Eilish got like five awards. Demi Lovato made a comeback after her overdose in 2018. And she like got really emotional. Had to start the song again. I just, I don't like that girl. Yeah, respect for coming through wherever you came through, like rehab or whatever, but like, I, I don't know. Some people, some people are just, I'm not a fan of her music anyway, so. I'm, I don't think I'm the only one there. She's not that good a singer, to be honest. Or maybe I'm just upsetting a lot of Demi Lovato fans. Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, Billie Eilish, who I've been a fan of for a few years now. Um, helped me through, through some difficult times. Her music, so. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew she'd be winning awards, but like, some people weren't so sure, like, who's this kid? Really 16. And now look at her, you know? And of course, Phineas, her brother, gets a lot of plaudits for the writing, the production process. Um, so they've, they've both got awards. It's just great to see young, young talent coming through. I'm on the lookout for the next thing, but doubt it at the moment. But a singer I'm really into at the moment is Sam Fender. Uh, well, for 2020, but he obviously he's been around a while. But I've got a little playlist on Spotify, a 2020 playlist. Got got his songs in there. Even if they were made last year, it's like songs I'm going to listen to this year. Or artists I'm going to listen to this year. So, yeah, Sam Fender. If you like rock, you probably know who he is. Lewis Capaldi has just done my nut in. Like, you're making too many songs, mate. Chill out. Yeah, I liked his first one. I like a few of the others, but yeah. Chill out, you just... Too... I don't know. He's funny, though. I like him as a person, yeah. He's alright, his jokes. But yeah. And Snow Patrol. I've got a new album, I've been listening to that. Reworked a few of the old songs. You know, it says... A bit of music out there. Um, yeah, I, as you know, I'm a huge, huge music fan. But yeah, I don't know where this conversation is going about music. But, um, so yeah, going back to vlogging and this birthday vlog. I've done it in the David Dobrik style. So it'd be like, maybe not four minutes, 20, but something like that. Um, so I've been watching a lot of his vlogs. I've been learning like hit that kind of style and the and you got you know the craziness of it and the the banter and all that. Um, it's not that easy. It gets quite stressed out, I'm sure, making those vlogs fit together like that. And I've seen interviews where he said that like it's really difficult, but he, he loves it. If you wake up and there's something you love to do, then go for it. You know, if you really love what you're doing. It's just, it's not, nothing beats it that high of doing what you love. Like when you upload a video, like for a while I didn't have that. At the beginning I really did, like for a long time. I need to get back to that. Because I've been vlogging per se. It's been the gaming, it's been the podcasts. Proper vlog. But I haven't felt like I've done a good vlog in a long time. Does that, I don't know if that sounds strange. But I haven't felt happy with vlog in a while, well, the last one maybe, maybe my birthday vlog, maybe, definitely the ones from Italy, I got high at making those, and uploading them, and that felt good, but, since then, I haven't made many vlogs, but like, the ones I have, I haven't felt happy with, I'm in between styles, you know what I mean, I'm caught up between being more creative, and being more David Dobrik style, I'm inspired, basically, but I'm also inspired by Casey. Of course, Casey nice that. If you don't know who he is by now, where have you been? Well, if you haven't been on YouTube, you wouldn't know. But different style, more creative, takes more time over the vlogs. Maybe 10 minutes. Maybe I'll do like five, six minutes. I don't know. Probably end up being like 11 minutes, which is too long. Because the idea of a shorter vlog is that you make the audience want more. The viewers want to come back for another video. So what happened, what happened? You know? I don't know about doing part ones and part twos and doing shorter videos, but definitely a shorter vlog is better. People want the action. They want it there and then. It's changed the way people vlog though. 
is changing, you know. And speaking of my channel, I've been considering, heavily considering, getting my own merch, like getting t-shirts and printing my brand on it, like Louisie21, making it a brand, you know. It's difficult, it won't be cheap, and it's risky, because um, there's only 94 of you. And what, are you going to buy a t-shirt twice? <laughs> Once you bought a t-shirt, that'd be it. I'm thinking about it. I'm not promising anything. I'm heavily thinking about it. I'm doing my research, weighing up the options, weighing up the pros and cons. You've got to think about it. I've got to think about it. Like, financially, is it really going to work? Wait till I get more subscribers. Try it out on a few. Just order like 10 and see how they look. And if that's the case, I can sell them locally or something. But I want to like, but posting them out to people is like, it's going to be a nightmare. That's the thing I'm thinking. That's one of the cons. Like you got to pay for postage and all that. You know how much I'm charging for these t-shirts. It might as well be something more expensive that I can actually make money off. You know, not a five quid t-shirt. But I'm considering it. Don't, like, get too excited. Don't go screaming around the house. He's making merch. The hottest merch in the game. No. Logan Paul has that title. The hottest, softest merch in the game. They've all got merch. That's how they make their money. A lot of them, don't even, YouTubers, in general, don't even make money off their videos. Advertising. So, in David Dobrik's case, SeatGeek, basically, or NordVPN in other cases but yeah it's through the sponsors through the merch like Logan Paul made a lot of money through merch in his first few years more than he did from videos and that's what's keeping him going I reckon merch the side men the amount of merch they do every, every top YouTuber really has merch or some something to do with that because it does sell if you've got fans they will buy it I've got 94 of you so far, so let's get to 100. Alright guys, <laughs> I've moved. It's funny, isn't it? Just prefer it here. don't know if it's better or what, but yeah. Just a change of scenery. Hope you don't mind. But yeah. So, what was I even talking about? Uh, vlogging, basically, and merch. That was it, wasn't it? Um, yeah, um, am I actually going to make much? It's hard to say at the moment if it's worth it with 94, you know, 94 subscribers. It, it will be one day for sure. And I, I've got the tools to do it, basically. I know what needs to be done. Can I execute it? Like, that's, the, that's the thing. And it is 2020, got that 2020 vision, you know. Maybe, maybe not. I'm I'm looking into it, but it's one of them things. I, I I'm not too sure. Is it worth it? No, it's one of them. I've got to weigh it up, and I, like I've said already, but um, no, yeah, Kobe, the Kobe Bryant thing just. Like I said, it just threw everyone. Like, what the hell? Like, what is God doing if there is a God, like I said earlier? This is a shame. Anyway, like I said it was my brother's birthday weekend. So you'll see that vlog whenever, at some point. Don't go missing that. You know, like, share, comment, subscribe, all the usual. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. And TikTok, that's the other thing. I've started TikTok. Well, I watch more TikToks than I actually make. Um, it's fun. Kind of. But, like, too many kids on there. Like, it's freaky. Like, too many people just dancing, like, showing off their backsides or whatever. That's what half of it is. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I don't mind that at all. It's just when they're a bit too young, I mean. Like, come on. But like, and then there's people that are, oh, am I too old for TikTok? 
Probably, yeah. I probably am too. But that's the nature of anything. Like, there's going to be haters, and there's going to be people who like it, people who don't. Um, you know, it's like Vine. TikTok is the next thing, but like, it's toxic in some ways. It's bad. It's bad, man. There's so many bad memes. But you get away with so much. Like, how many World War Three jokes? I cannot tell you. It's ridiculous. It doesn't even... Well, it doesn't really make sense, does it? It's like... Like, just because Trump did the stupid thing that has all these jokes about World War Three. Come on, guys. I mean, obviously, there's Kobe tributes on there. Hopefully, they don't make any stupid memes, because... That would be unfair. Like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? But yeah, <laughs> someone will. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to have people on there. It's all just connected to their Instagram, or YouTube in some cases. You know, some of just obscure, like, random people, like me, trying to get noticed on there. Or just comment on loads of other stuff. That is how you get relevant sometimes. Even on Instagram, like, famous people's Instagram, just comment on stuff. Maybe not in a nasty, well, nasty way. If you want that kind of attention, a lot of people do do that. But yeah, just comment, get your name out there. You know, people see it and go, oh, "Who's that guy?" Then you, you're affiliated with that person. That's what I do sometimes. I can't remember where I got the idea from. Someone else was saying the same thing. Like you got to follow people. God, the sun is really in and out today. Is that annoying you as much as it's annoying me? But yeah, guys, that's how it is. It's crazy world, TikTok, like, YouTube's one thing, but TikTok is another thing altogether. And speaking of YouTubers and stuff, Logan Paul was on the Russell Brand podcast, and Russell Brand returned a favour and went on Logan Paul's podcast. And they are much alike in some ways, like, a bit crazy, don't know what they're going to do next. And Russell Brand still has that persona, even though he's a lot older, but... Logan sees him as a mentor, like... You don't want that guy as a mentor, like, just chats a load of... Scientific stuff that... Lost me many times on that podcast. Crazy. So, yeah. Russell Brand... And Logan Paul. An odd couple, but yeah, he was on the podcast. And yeah, he was chatting a load of waffle. But in a good way, like... Not necessarily waffle. But the thing about responsibility, like saying how Russell Brand, from his point of view, he's got a family, he's got responsibility, he's got kids. So really, he's got responsibilities that keep him sane. Stop him from going crazy and ooh dally, or ooh lally, whatever you call it. Mental, basically. Off the rails. Like, you know, the lights are on but no one's home. The engine's running but there's no one behind the wheel. That kind of thing. Like, Logan is a bit like that. They are similar in character too, but, uh, you know, the way they act, like, but except Russell Brand comes off as more of an intelligent person, definitely more spiritual, but, like, yeah, and Logan sees him as a mentor, mm, I don't know, he's not a good mentor, I wouldn't recommend Russell Brand, even though I like him, like, he's been funny in films, doesn't really do films anymore, but, you know, forgetting Sarah Marshall was a good film. Get him to the Greek, just funny films, it's crazy. And he basically plays himself. But yeah, so Logan sees him as a mentor because he's had hate like he has in different ways through the politics he got involved in, you know, with Corbyn and all that and chatting about politics and the environment, I think, and like anti government and all that. And now he stopped that, maybe because he, he found something out they didn't want to know. Something conspiracy based, like all the conspiracies I've been reading about the Bush family and the Clinton family and things you don't really want to know about and yeah, I'm not going to talk about but corruption and paedophilic stuff involving that guy that allegedly killed himself, Jeffrey Epstein, you know, Prince Andrew, all that. It's all connected. But yeah, I don't want to get into that, but any Russell Brand used to talk all about that, but it doesn't anymore. Makes videos here and there. I watched one of his recently, talking about the Joker, and his impact on society, and mental health and all that. I made a similar vlog. 
but yeah, so I get inspiration from all these different angles of vlogging or podcasting or people giving their opinions. Like I, like Logan's vlogs, I, I don't want to watch them anymore. They're not as crazy as he, I, even though it was cringe before. I, I, some of them were funny when he, you know, with the parrot and all that, and some of the crazy stuff with with, with Evan that he did. But Logan Paul, no, even he said it was too cringe his old stuff. You can't believe he was like that. And he was saying in the, in the Russell Brand podcast that he'll look back at what he's like now two years later and he'll be like, who is that guy? I mean, I feel the same, but really, deep down, you don't change. Like, I've learned and adapted to different things over the years from bad and good, but I'm still me. I'm still the same eight-year-old that thought he was cool wearing sunglasses indoors, you know, and <laughs> there's so many pictures of me like that as, as a kid. I was just a cool dude, I didn't care. Like, when you're a kid, you really don't care. Just are oh, you, and authenticity, that's cool. Authenticity is cool. So most kids are authentic, so they're cool. Like, they act how they act all the time. Then as you get older, you get more subdued, more boring, depressed, and old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In general, but I don't, I don't feel that yet. My mate turned 26 the other day. He's like, "Oh, I feel old." I was like, "Welcome to the club." No, but really, I said, "How does it feel?" Because like, I just feel old now. What do you mean old? 26. You've been through a lot of shit, but you're not old. We're not old. Like, I don't, I don't. Uh, can, what, what counts as old? An older person can be. Have let. I don't know. Doesn't mean that like, just because they've experienced more. I mean, yeah. Experience makes you old in some ways, but old means you've learned a lot over you, over the years and you've adapted to things and changed and lived through different things. Um, so that's different, but yeah, age is just a number. Like do what you want. Like, I can't afford to worry about that. Like you know, you, you don't, tomorrow's never promised. In my case, I really don't know. <coughs> so you can't live thinking about. Oh, when I get old, blah, blah, blah. Or feel old ever, because, you know, one day you're not going to wake up. So, to put it simply, you know, just do the best, be the best you can be every day. And it goes back to Kobe, because Kobe was saying, or used to say, like, what is it? I've got a video about it anyway, you might have seen it. I'll put it in, in this podcast somewhere. He was saying, like, you know, every day, like, if you had the choice... Here's it. This is what it is. He was saying, if you had the choice to go back in time and relive something, if you had that ability, you wouldn't do it. Because it would make that moment pointless. Because you'd know that you could go back and redo it. You know, like playing a vid any video game. Think about a video game. My voice is going again. But yeah, think about a video game. Like, you can restart the race and do it again. You can restart the game and start again. But in life, you can't do that, so... You have to make that one memory perfect. Not perfect, but you have to do the most you can in that moment. Jesus. I'm actually losing my voice, but uh, that is some good... <coughs> good knowledge. Good words. Let me get a drink. Jesus. Can I get a drink? Why does my voice always go? I was chatting the best, uh, the best topic, like, amazing. I leave it. Hmm? I can just skip it in. So cold. Yeah. 
After. Mm-hmm. After. Start them in a bit. Hmm? Start them after. After. Don't take that long. No. Okay, la 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 la. My voice is bar. Well, what you could call a voice, and I, I hate my voice. I actually hate my voice. But where was I? Yeah. So you can't relive a memory. If you can't relive a memory, you've got to make that one the best it can be. And do your best and work hard. And Kobe said that to LeBron. Like, hard work will get you there. Hard work. And I saw an interview with uh, David Dobrik that I might talk about it in a... I'll talk about it now. And I'll put a little clip in if I can. And not get a copyright strike, I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, David Dobrik was being interviewed and he was saying... See, I'm... It was like a... Kind of an interview. And, you know, he was saying, like... With what he does... He, I've, lost, I've lost what I'm saying. But it's just pure passion that gets him through. And if you really love something, you will work hard at it. And you'll do it. But... He said that like, he never understood... What... Like, hard, when someone says work hard... Like a guy comes up to you in a Lamborghini, like he's got a Lamborghini, how do you get this? Because hard work. And as a kid, David Dobrik couldn't really comprehend or understand what actually that meant. Like what do you actually do, you know? And a lot of people have that, like even me, like I didn't get, like, okay, hard work, what does that mean then? What, you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to get your head around it until you actually get to a place where you're like that. And I see, I, I see what they mean. Because in a sport, for example, like the more you practice, the more you play, the better you're gonna get, no matter what, no matter how many mistakes you make. You know, Michael Jordan, any basketball player, Kobe, they had a lot of success, but I'm sure they had a lot of failures too, that got them to that success, that pushed them over the line. And David Dobrik, in his case, making vlogs, he's the top of the game. He's the top of his game, one of the best. Like in terms of content and how much he creates and the work ethic he puts into it and that is hard work, paying off like he's more happy than he could ever be he couldn't want another version of life like life turned out perfectly like so, he, and he wants to live every moment to the fullest in the same way that Kobe said, you know to not waste a moment because one day you're 26 next day you're hit by a bus or you're 56, you know not that there's anything wrong with that you know, but what things to look back on and say, look, I learned this from this. This taught me. This gave me the knowledge and the resilience. Yeah. I don't know my big words like muscle brand, but uh, yeah, there you go. So yeah, hard work. And like I said earlier, I'm not happy sometimes when I'm doing these vlogs. I don't feel like I'm putting out the best I could full potential and maybe it's I don't know what it is like filming my brother like maybe he's not as funny as I, I'd like him to be compared to David Dobrik's vlog squad or whoever's in my vlogs but they're real people normal people not showing up for the camera and I've had so many real conversations that I wouldn't put on camera especially in the summer in Italy so being Italian as well but like situations where I'm thinking like creatively I'm thinking from a vlog point of view like I could podcast this, I could do a video about this, but why would I? Because it's a personal experience that's shared with someone else, them telling you a story about something good or bad that happened to them, a memory, you know, that you... Like, a lot of it I caught on camera in the vlogs over the time in Italy, like the stuff that I really loved about that holiday, why it's one of the best the last two or three years have been. But I don't feel like I'm doing things just to force content, I'm doing it because I'm doing it to live in the moment, whatever, regardless of whatever it is, fun-wise in Italy, you know, like staying up till five eight, till eight a.m., you know, and that was in the vlog, just about that, you know, it's just a coincidence. Whether I was vlogging or not, I would have done the same thing. You know, I, I'm not on the level of David where I'm vlogging that much. But I do understand the work ethic you have to put in and to create ideas and stuff 
Mine's more of just wherever I am at that time. Um, and I don't know how I made so many in the past. I worked harder, I think. Made more vlogs to get those views. No, I look back in the day when I had like 50 subscribers or 30. I look at that and I go, I need more. I need to get more. Let me work harder at this. And I did, and I'm at 94. And I'm not stopping. And I want to make that merch one day, whether it's now or next year or whenever. But like when I, in my first podcast this year, or the last one from last year, that I was saying like my New Year's resolutions, and on there I didn't say um, make merch because I wasn't thinking about it at the time. Since then I have been looking at the way other people do it. Um, but you know, nothing's set in stone. You can you're not the same person you were the day before, or last week or last year. I've said it before on the podcast. You know, you change every day, every minute. But deep down, in my case, I'm still that same eight-year-old with with the sunglasses indoors. And you're still the, the kid you were however many years ago. Uh, and don't lose that. Don't let anything get, you know, whatever, whatever age you are, don't get down or more depressed. And so, yeah, get sub yeah, I mean, don't let things subdue you, like your inner eight-year-old or whatever it is. Um, obviously, yeah, don't do a Logan Paul and go out of control. But, you know, and appreciate that the responsibility of the everyday stuff is what keeps you sane in many cases. That's why so many famous people, singers, whatever, what have you, actors, they go crazy with the money because they've got nothing to do. Um, and you need good people around you. That's why I noticed about David Dobrik and his vlog squad. They're all good people. Um, they're not necessarily fake. They act up for the vlogs, yeah, they put play characters, but... You know, that's part of it, but they're good people and they're a team. You need people around you, you can't just climb the mountain alone, you know. You know, people... But then again, people go to acquire so many acquaintances and friends. Um, but then some of these people that have so many friends, that, that kind of friends, they get to a level where these people aren't actually going to help you in a dire situation. They're not going to help you, so... They're not necessarily real friends. What you need is like four or five good friends. And you can do anything. I mean, you, you can have the belief to do anything. Uh, just four or five people. You don't need to acquire all these people, you know. Yeah, acquaintances, people connected through work and stuff. People that can help you in that sense. But people just think they acquire all these people. And they're all going to have their back. No. When the shit hits the fan, most of them are going to turn the other way and jump on the next bandwagon or next person with money that grab their money and stuff and betray you. I mean, we've seen that with Jake Paul. I mean, he can be a bit of an arsehole, Jake Paul, and, but a lot of these people just left him when he really needed them. And, oh yeah, he's divorced now from that Tana Mojo, whatever her name is. That was a fake marriage anyway, but he's divorced now, yeah. So yeah, they can go back to Casual sex. Well, she can. That's what she does. Because most people know her from having slept with her or YouTube. But probably from having slept with her. But that's Hollywood. But yeah, like I was saying, don't forget your inner kid, your inner, like, passions. And try and do that. If you can do that as a job, you've got it made. Like David Dobrik. You know. And I, I'm making YouTube and... It is a passion. It's become a passion. At first, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I wasn't, wasn't sure. I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing. And I, there's few vlogs I can say are perfect. If any, there's always something that will get me. Um, but people who criticise, so, sometimes it helps. It motivates you to do better. I'm not saying about haters, I'm saying about, like, my brother would be like, oh, this is shit, this is boring. Why well, you got a 15 minute video? of you just going to the shops. Well, I mean, when it's a nice day out and it's summer, I feel like vlogging forever. I can make like a whole series. Um, but I need, I need to get back to that work, get back to that grind. I feel like in the summer I'd do it better. Because I remember early days, early 17, 20, 2017 when I started, I would like go out, vlog, 
go to the park and stuff, vlog. Um, but it would be it'd be more. I felt like I was more funny at that point because I just point out something random in the street and I have some banter about it, you know, and and little time lapses and stuff. But yeah, I want to get back to that kind of, but do it in a four minute, five minute video. But I felt like that era I, I made better vlogs. I don't know because I was, I, was, I don't know, I don't know what it was. But still, I didn't know what I was doing, but I just did it. Just doing it is the difference. Maybe not doing it right at first, but then you will. Like riding a bike, you know, it's got to be muscle memory eventually. It's got to have the faith that you can, like, keep working at it and then put it off. Because if you don't put in the work, you're not getting anywhere. Like, some people say it's better to be good at a lot of things than one, than really good at one thing, but nah. It's better to be really good at one thing. To try a lot of different things, yeah. It's, it's good to try to know what you're really good at. And what your passion is. I've tried a lot of things, a lot of jobs. Voluntary and kind of paid. I haven't liked... Well, I've, not say I haven't liked them, but... I've known that's not for me. Until I found this. Like, It was through a, like a... Employability like thing for disabled people that I went to. That got me thinking about YouTube. And I've been to other meetings with charities, with other disabled people talking about how they can't get jobs. Well, what did I do? I made my own job. I created a job for myself. I created a job. Something that I can do. That I'm passionate about. You know, don't let a careers advisor tell you what you should and shouldn't do. Because they did tell me, oh, I was like, oh, I want to work in radio, like, be, get an apprenticeship. They don't exist, you can't do that. So I ended up doing journalism, but it wasn't all for nothing because journalism, YouTube, is not that far off. And, you know, having a conversation with one of my dad's clients the other day, it was like, he, he's in his 60s, he's got grandkids. And I was saying, how oh, do YouTube? Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, you know, things like that. YouTube, um... And I was saying like how I got into it and all that, starting with journalism, he's like, well, that's along the same kind of wavelength, you know, and I'm proud when I'm telling people. I mean, some people might not see it as a real job. God knows if my grandparents know if I do anything at all. Yeah, guys, I mean, even like now, like in this podcast, there's things I think I could, could have done better or explained better, but you just go with it. And there's a playfulness to YouTube and that's why I started the gaming because I've always been a gamer in some ways and I've got it, I'm quite playful as a person uh, you know I like a bit of banter though, that, though my banter on ga when I'm gaming or live streaming is not that good um, and I'm undecided on making recording videos and doing that or just live streaming maybe just live stream I don't know it's hard to say really and Twitch, I was on Twitch, but I got like two views. I was like, nah. I mean, even on YouTube, I don't get that many, but uh, on the live streams, but then later on, I do. Um, and it's more about views than subs, really, on, on YouTube in some ways. You're one of those people that view it and then go somewhere else. But you want them, you want them to subscribe, but a lot of people just view stuff and then move on. Don't necessarily subscribe. But I've been addicted to David Dobrik vlogs because of the. It's just funny. It's playful, it's silly, it's banter. And they're all around my age well, some of them around my age. And it's just it's just good banter. And to you can't recreate that in a studio on a TV show. Like it's their ideas, their jokes, their pranks they're coming up with as a team. And you can't recreate that. I mean make money and then you can you can get more people involved do what he's doing on a bigger scale. I haven't got money like that, but I'm still on YouTube and I'm still enjoying it. And he would have if he didn't have so much money. He'd still enjoy it. Maybe not as much, you know. Can't get a Ferrari. Um, but he was doing it before he was successful. And then you carry on doing it, and that's what makes you successful. And even if you're not, at least you tried. At least you gave it a go. I mean, any footballer that plays long enough they get to the end of the career and 
regardless of how successful they've been or not, they've got to be proud that they've been through that, the ups and downs. That those moments where you've got to grit your teeth and fight back to win the game or defend your lead or whatever. They'll be proud of their careers when they look back, even if they're not necessarily the best player. Because every player, like, they take pride in what they do, I'm sure. Most of them. I take pride in what I do. Whether it gets any better, any, any more successful or not. And it's certainly, like, everything, I don't know, I'm not going to lose subscribers. Unless I find a forest and I find a dead body, Logan Paul. <laughs> but I'm not planning on doing that. I'm not planning on going to another country and just offending their whole culture. Um, but speaking of going to another country, I hope you enjoy my Italy vlogs. I'm planning to go back for Easter, I want to. I don't know if that's true, but family's coming here. So many family members are coming here over these next few weeks. Easter, I don't know what we're doing. Um, yeah, it's confusing. I, I'd love to go away, but we've got family everywhere, so... It's difficult, it might work, it might not. We shall see. And you'll see because you'll be there. But that was really good, wasn't it, last year? April last year I was in Italy, in Milan, Lake Garda, which is a lake, a big lake in the north of Italy. Hanging out with my cousin and my aunt, aunties, aunt and uncle, and yeah. That was lit and I did a few vlogs, some of which I, I was really happy with because the memories they created for me and my cousin and my brother and we look back on that holiday all the time. It's the last time I saw my cousin, actually. Um, and she might be coming over too. Soon. Like, depending, because she's an air hostess. And the flights to China are supposed to be cancelled because of that big virus, the coronavirus or whatever. Coronavirus? It's beer. Everyone's drinking beer over there. No. It's Chinese virus, anyway. So... Don't know if that airline's going to let her travel there for work. Hope not. <laughs> um, but yeah, if that gets cancelled, she's coming to England to see us for a bit. Just a few days because it's been so long. But yeah, of course, the summer as well. These are vlogs I look forward to, but I don't like the waiting time to upload them. Like, I'm not bringing my laptop to Italy. It's just chaos. I tried that the year before. It's just stressful. It's kind of messed up my holiday. I'm not doing that again, but... Those are the times I feel at my best, creatively and in terms of confidence. Because I, on a miserable day like this, what I don't know, I don't feel up for certain things. I don't know, going out and vlogging, I, I hate the cold. At like, certain temperatures, all right, but below a certain temperature, now, nah. Like, come on, leave me alone, weather. That's the only problem about living in England. You live in LA and you've got, like, the whole year to vlog in the sunshine. Screw you, LA. Damn England. But we've got pubs, so who cares? Regardless of the weather, you can be in a pub getting absolutely sloshed. Regardless of what it's like outside. Alcohol. <laughs> Thank God for alcohol. Bear in mind, I haven't drunk that much at all this year. I haven't been on a proper night out this year. <laughs> well, New Year's Eve. <laughs> I didn't go out, but I got sloshed. Um, so I've got to do that. Or have I? I have been to a Oh. No, that was 2019. I'm getting mixed up. That was like 30th or 31st. 30th. No. I'm getting confused. That was last year. I was in a pub. I've been in a pub since then. I don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah. Um, that's what's going on. So big things are happening. And I'm going to the Tottenham Southampton FA Cup replay next week or the week after. If we win that, we're playing Norwich. And I might, I might vlog that game. Good friend of mine who I used to play Pacha football with, who moved on to another team, he's going to the game, he's a Southampton fan. Well, he's kind of a United fan, but you'd rather support Southampton in the way they're playing than United. You've hold, you, you would hold out more hope for Southampton staying up than United. You know, imagine if United sold Rashford now. They could be relegated straight away. And they're missing Pogba, I'm telling you. But don't let me get into football on a podcast. Because we just start arguing and we'll be here all day. But anyway guys, I want to thank you. And remember to follow me on on the Instagrams in it. I'm not on Snapchat because anyone who still is like 
you're mental, mate. You, you're off your rocker if you're on Snapchat. Um, maybe it's not that bad, but like I never got into it. You know, Instagram is where I'm at. TikTok as well. I can't remember my TikTok name. Tick, my TikTok name. It's like Johnny Calabrese eight. I don't know. Anyway, I'll, I'll link it. I'll put it somewhere around this screen. Somewhere. Anywhere. Here. 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 Or here. Somewhere. And my Instagram name. So keep it real as always. I will let you know if I'm doing merch or not. I might do a test run. Just get a bit of merch myself to wear. When I'm vlogging, you know, why not? But that is it for this podcast. Podcast 29 has been a lot going on. I got really, I, I'm proud of what, what I've been talking about in the second half since I've been in this room. This room just makes me more creative. You know, I don't know, I'm proud of what I've been saying. I feel like I've, I've really got into this vlog, this podcast. I always say vlog. Um, but yeah, I feel, feel like I've really got in, in depth here. Because the first half wasn't happy. Like I said, I, I'm always criticising myself too much. Like, I'm um and ah too much, or like, saying like all the time. Like a girl from West Hollywood. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But this is the end. This is the end. Um, hopefully I'll do some Call of Duty, definitely GTA Fridays, still on. Um, remember to release that in your eight-year-old. And, like I did, or do. And, like... When I really get passionate about a subject, I don't um and ah, I don't say like or whatever. I get straight to the point. And you notice that probably in the second half, compared to the first half of the podcast, where I'm just talking about things in general. And when I get more passionate, um, the real words come out, you know. And I haven't felt that for a while on the podcast. Maybe, maybe for one or two. But even in the New Year one, like I said some things, but podcasts I've done in the past... I felt better about. Even the first one when I told my whole story, which I might have to do again, just to update any of you newcomers. Or go back and watch it, it's like my first podcast. But in that time I was doing like half in Italian, half in English, which was weird. And that was funny for a bit, that worked for a bit. Remember when I was uploading them on SoundCloud, then transferring them to iTunes, didn't get any listens on iTunes um, and that was just an ordeal but hard work pays off sometimes like nothing better than at the end of the day you go to bed and you like put your head on the pillow and you're like wow I worked hard today I achieved something I did something you know and you, you can't get that all the time just don't forget your inner eight year old do what that's telling you to do if it's telling you to murder people then maybe don't do that but like in my case, to entertain, I don't know. Am I an entertainer or a YouTuber? I don't know. Is it the same thing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the answers, guys. I don't have no intellectual words to give you right now. Maybe a few, but like, nah. That is it for podcast 29. It's been good. It's been sweet. It's been lovely. It's been emotional. And take it easy as always. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Peace. Missing someone.